There is no way you haven't heard of the GT730. It's everywhere and it's not good. It came out in 2014 as a basic display adapter and many have had the displeasure of trying to use it for gaming. However, I'm gonna be overclocking it as far as possible and it might not be as bad as you think. I've had this card for about a year now, but I should have done a video on it ages ago. I got it for free from a friend and it has saved me so many times and never fails to output a video no matter what I plug it into. That being said, it needs a little TLC. It wasn't heavily used, but it's bracket is cut and it could probably do with some new thermal piss. Now there are many different versions of the GT730 with varying clock speeds, memory sizes, and even GPU core. Ours is by HP and luckily it seems to be one of the more powerful versions, selling for about $20 on eBay. Okay, and that was pretty painless. There wasn't too much to take apart. I gotta bend the fins just to get the stupid cable out. And there we go. I mean, the heatsink is pretty dust free, but I might as well wash it out. Powering this beast of a card is the GK208 processor. On R730, it comes clocked at 902 megahertz, has 384 shaders, 32 texture mapping units, and eight render output units. So I cleaned the heatsink out, and this thermal pad, this thermal paste is like welded on. So I'm gonna put on new paste, but I am to reuse this. The processor was used in low-end 6, 7, and 800 series NVIDIA cards, along with a few quadros, but it was never intended for gaming. It's built off the 28 nanometer process in the Kepler 2.0 architecture, and in layman's terms, it's old and not powerful. It's all nice and clean now, look at that. On R730, the GPU was also paired with 2 gigabytes of DDR3 memory clocked at 900 megahertz. The whole card also only pulls 27 watts, but some variants of this processor can be configured up to 49. Either way, I knew to get the maximum performance, I would have to overclock it. Alright, and there we go. The card's all back together. Let's see what it can do. The test system we're going to be using is a modified HP pre-built. It has an i3-4130, 16GB of RAM, and Windows 7 running on an unbranded SSD. All we gotta do is just install the 730 and... There we go! Then, after installing the drivers, I opened up MSI Afterburner and overclocked the card as far as possible. However, this wasn't as easy as it seems. I started by searching for what other people ran their cards at and found a post that unfortunately summed it up pretty accurately. But I still had hope for this card, and after a half hour of games crashing and artifacting, the fastest speed I was able to get the card to run at was 210 on the core and 225 on the memory. Here's GPU Z where you can see how fast everything's running and the rest of the card's specifications, so let's see what this 730 can do. But before we do that, consider subscribing or leaving a like because it genuinely helps me out. Now, let's get into it. Now, the benchmarks actually went pretty well, better than I expected. I started off in CSGO in 1080p with the low settings and got an estimated average of about 60 FPS. The highest I saw was about 75, the lowest was 50, and the game ran perfectly. I thought for sure I'd have to lower the resolution to 720p to get it playable, but apparently not. So I cranked up the difficulty a bit and ran some GTA 5. As anticipated, this didn't go as well as CSGO. I drove around in the city in 1080p with the normal settings and got an average frame rate of 36. That's not ideal, but it's not bad enough to justify lowering the resolution. Because it didn't have any screen tearing or stuttering, it genuinely felt smooth and was playable. Maybe there's a sweet spot at a slightly lower resolution, but this felt fine. I was actually struggling to bring this card to its knees, so I tried playing some Valorant, one of the newest games I have installed. But instead of flatlining, the 730 got an average frame rate of 119 FPS. This was in 1080p with the low settings, but I was taken aback by this performance. I did try kicking it up to 1440p and it got about 60 FPS, but my capture card didn't like the resolution so I couldn't record it. Either way, the game ran great and was the best performing benchmark out of any I tested. But I had a game that I knew would stress this card, BeamNG Drive. I opted to run it in the low settings with 1080p, but it still got an average frame rate of 42 FPS. This is not an easy game to run, and many integrated graphics can hardly even start it. So this was some pretty solid performance coming from this card, and it didn't disappoint. But I still hadn't yet made the card suffer, so I decided to play the notoriously masochistic game Rust. Unfortunately, it kept crashing during the loading screen, so I had to revert the clock speeds to the default settings. And in 1080p with a 0.8 render scale, the 730 only managed to get 20 FPS. This was bad, so I turned it down to 720p, lowered the render scale a bit more, and ended up with a new average of 40. So basically, you can choose between the game looking unplayably or performing unplayably. Either way, it's not going to be good. The next game I tested, Dirt Rally, didn't actually perform as well as I expected. 
Initially, I ran the game in 1080p with the medium settings and started up a quick custom race. However, the 730 was spitting out a frame rate in the lower 20s, and there was noticeable input lag that directly impacted my driving. So I switched over to the ultra low quality preset, and the performance nearly tripled. After a few minutes of driving around, it got an average frame rate of 74 FPS, and as a whole, ran very smoothly. With these settings, there was no input lag, stuttering, or frame tearing, and I would say if you're using the 730, these are the ideal settings to use. Last but not least was the best Far Cry, Far Cry 4. The minimum system requirements for this game cite a GTX 460, but I wasn't sure that the GT 730 could match that. So I threw it into 1080p with the low settings and yeah, it really couldn't. It got an average frame rate of 22, right on that border between maybe being playable. But after dropping it down to 720p, the average frame rate shot up to 40 and was perfectly stable. And that's about as well as my card is going to perform. Honestly, I did not expect this card to perform as well as it did. It's not good by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be. It is a low-end card, and it doesn't run things perfectly on it, but it can still run them, for the most part. I'd say it's still viable for most applications, just don't expect any miracles to come from overclocking. But if you are actually interested in buying one, make sure to look into the specific model that you'll be getting. There are so many different versions of this card, and some perform significantly better than others. So, I want to recommend it, but if you're going to be running games on it, I'd say just save your money and get a low-end 10 or 16 series card from Nvidia. On the used market, they seem to have a much better price to performance ratio, and although you can game on it, I wouldn't recommend the 730 for gaming. But if you're building a server PC for CPU intensive tasks, it might not be a bad pickup. It's actually what my card was originally used for, and although it's not powerful, my 730 has been reliable and has gotten me out of some interesting situations. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider leaving a like or subscribing because it genuinely helps me out. If you want to join the community, there's a link to the official Jane Dyke Discord server in the description, alongside a few donation methods that directly support the channel. If you have any questions or related comments, then leave them below and I'll be sure to respond to it. That's about it. Have a great day. Bye.